Good morning. Do me a favor, turn to somebody around you, say, I'm glad you're here today. It is a joy to gather together in worship on Red Hat Club Sunday, isn't it? It's Pentecost Sunday. We'll talk more about what that is later on. One of those words you may not know if you haven't been around the church world a whole bunch. A holiday that doesn't get lifted up in the rest of the world as much as Christmas and Easter. But Pentecost Sunday, we're going to have some fun today. Glad that you're here, whether you're in person or online. If you're worshiping online with us, hope you'll use those comment sections just to say good morning to everyone. To everybody here and everybody that's worshiping online, wherever you may be this Memorial Day weekend. We're glad that you're taking time to be in worship with us. If you're here in person, uh, if you'd reach out in front of you, there's attendance cards in the pews. We'd ask one per household, fill those out. We'll drop those in the basket on our way out of worship. It's a great way for us to just know who is here. I got louder. I like that. A uh, few announcements before we begin in our worship together. Uh, I'm not going to highlight everything, but just a couple things coming up. Our Welka Women of the ELCA event. Women of the ELCA has an event coming up on June 7th. Uh, the weather has been absolutely gorgeous, hasn't it? Uh, and so hopefully a beautiful day to go for a walk and do some learning and enjoy lunch together. So go ahead and sign up for that uh, to enjoy that event on June 7th. Also that day, our Playtown Preschool graduation happens right here in this space at 5 p.m. And so if you're available, I'd encourage you just to come to uh, support our Playtown graduates and to enjoy the fun of seeing preschoolers uh, finish their school year. So come on out and be a part of that as we encourage our Playtown students and families. Our Graduate Sunday is coming up on June 11th. We recognize any members who are graduated from high school or college or beyond. Uh, and so if you have a graduate or you are a graduate, please make sure and reach out and let us know. This is one of those hard, we don't have this in our database. And so we need you to let us know so that we can make sure to honor everyone that is graduating this year. Vacation Bible School coming up, our first in-person Vacation Bible School since 2019. Uh, so we're excited to host Stellar Vacation Bible School June 19th to 23rd. We do that right here from 9 to noon, Monday through Friday. Uh, how many of you have a Facebook account? I'm friends with a lot more of you than that. How many of you have a Facebook account? You're on Facebook. So you should be seeing ads pop up. We're running some ads right now to spread the word to the community that Vacation Bible School is coming. So when you're scrolling through Facebook and all of a sudden you're like, hey, that's our saviors. I know that. You should do two things. A, you should click on the little heart button, the love button, to love it. Then you should click on the share button and say, Rockford friends, if you have a child uh, or grandchild, share this news of Vacation Bible School. And by you sharing it, maybe it'll reach somebody you know that has somebody that's looking for a place for their kids to come and be loved and hear of God's love for them. So when you see that ad pop up, make sure you click that share button. Let others know that we have a great Vacation Bible School coming up. Lots more to check out in here. Uh, read as we move into summer. We give thanks for our worship choir who uh, will take a break after today. They get the summer off, believe it or not. We don't work them that hard, so they get the summer off. But uh, that means we're looking for musicians. If you've got a musical talent you want to share, talk to Paula. We'd love to have you share your musical talent here in worship. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able as we worship together on this day of Pentecost. We are all together in one place. And the tongues of the flame.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, give us tongues to proclaim your love to all peoples and power to work for justice in all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. You may be seated. Our scripture reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The word of the Lord. I have a children's sermon, if you dare. Come on up. What do I got here? A balloon. Is it a little one? A huge one. It's a huge balloon. So today I was thinking about we're celebrating. What are we celebrating today? Can you tell? Pentecost. It's Pentecost, which is all about the? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Pentecost is all about the Holy Spirit. So I was thinking, you know, the Holy Spirit is kind of like the wind. You know, you can't really see the wind, but you see what the wind does, right? And we see the wind in the trees, moves the branches. And we can put wind inside a balloon, and you can see it. It's all inside here, right? And so I was thinking about the Holy Spirit, and that it's kind of like air. It's kind of like around us. So I wondered if, if I did this, if we could see... Oh, we're going to have a party. Those guys are going. Good for you. Uh, that's okay. No, no, they'll, they'll, they know what they're doing over there. I think it's all gone now. Let's hear it for the Holy Spirit, represented by a balloon. Now, as you can see, uh, on Pentecost, everything is red, right? And then for the rest, you, you are. And then for the rest of the season of Pentecost, it's, what's color? You guys know? It's green. So, of course, for the balloon, I settled on blue. So, but I've been thinking about the Holy Spirit, and in the same way that that, that balloon went through everybody, and everybody was touching it, the Spirit is kind of like that. The Spirit is like...
That's the Holy Spirit theme. Actually, there's a movie that talks about this thing called the force. And the way they describe it in the film is very much the way we think about the Holy Spirit in the church. And some people think that the person who wrote that story borrowed the idea of the Holy Spirit to talk about this thing in the movie called The Force. But that's the Holy Spirit. It moves amongst us and through us and all around us. Now, what do you think the Holy Spirit does for you? Any ideas? You know, the Holy Spirit can encourage us. The Holy Spirit can surround us and make us feel safe. The Holy Spirit does all kinds of things. But how do you think the Holy Spirit would know to come and do things with you, to help with you? What do you think you can do to be in contact with the Holy Spirit? Then we pray. We pray and we ask God to have send the Holy Spirit to be amongst us and to help us and to touch each and every one of us. So let's do that now before we go sit back down. Let's pray and we'll say, the Lord be with you. And we pray together, dear God, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Help the Holy Spirit. Help us. In Jesus' name, we pray and play. Amen. Thanks for coming up on Pentecost Sunday. See you later. We just want to clarify that that Holy Spirit balloon was filled up with a pump. I did that children's sermon once, and we sat there, and we blew up balloons, and then let them go fly over the congregation, and with stage lights, all I saw was the spit coming out over the congregation. That was pre-COVID. We won't ever do that example again, because that was a pump balloon. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and from the Holy Spirit who moves in and through us with every breath we take. Amen. So Pentecost Sunday, as we've said, not a day that the rest of the world might understand. Christmas, people get. Easter, people have heard the story. Pentecost, our longest holiday, right? Today's Pentecost Sunday. We will now be in the season of Pentecost for the rest of eternity. No, uh, until this fall, uh, right? It's a really long season in the church because it's so important for the church, and yet the rest of the world hasn't caught on. There's no chocolate sales at Target today for Pentecost Sunday, so you're on your own for that. But Pentecost is this course about the coming of the Holy Spirit. So we're early in the book of Acts, right? We've got the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to tell us about Jesus' life and death and resurrection. And then we move into the book of Acts, and so Jesus has, has appeared to the disciples and then ascends again into heaven, the disciples are still gathered together. They, in Acts 1, uh, take a vote to replace Judah, so they're back to 12. And so there are 12 of them again, but they're still locked away in fear. And so Pentecost, we often call the birth of the church, because as the Holy Spirit descends with these flames of fire that appear on them, this recognition that the divine is within them, like Moses coming down from the mountain, and people can see in him that he has encountered the divine, that God is with him. Right? This is the disciples being transformed with this presence of the Spirit that lets people know God is here in a powerful way. And then they begin to speak in these other languages. And as this rushing wind comes and the people hear the sounds, people start to gather together. But now they're able to speak so that everyone understands in their own language. This is in Jerusalem at a festival time. This big city is filled with people from all over that are from different cultures and speak different languages, and yet as they gather together on this Pentecost day, they are all called into community together 
not just because they understand the language that is spoken, but because they are recognized fully as being part of this creation of the divine that each one of us is created in. And so it's not just about hearing one another, it's about fully welcoming and embracing and receiving the other. My friend, Pastor Tim Brown says, Pentecost is not a story of God empowering a few to give to the many what they don't already have but a story of God unleashing herself upon humanity so that divine wisdom and saving grace is seen and known in every nook and cranny of creation, which should, I think, make us more open to the experiences and ideas of others, especially because they glow with what the Celts called the spark of divine life, just like those disciples glowed that day. Pentecost, he says, is a reminder to me and should be for the whole church that divine grace and wisdom shows up everywhere like new wine surprising us at every sip. I'm trying to make eye contact with everyone, but I'm having a really hard time with the Bork family due to the balloon, so I'll just keep doing this every now and then. Celebrating Pentecost is not just about reading the story of what happened with the disciples some 2,000 years ago. For the church today to celebrate Pentecost is for us to recognize that the Holy Spirit is moving here today as we are called to be a part of not just what the church is now, but what is yet to come. It's about our call to be community, our call to find ways to reach out to those who we are not yet in relationship with as we see each person that we meet is created by the great divine. It's not just understanding the words of others, but it's embracing them fully for who they are and who God has made them to be. So here's some Holy Spirit foretelling. It means that if we are part of the dominant culture in the church today, we will have to learn to listen before we speak. We will have to learn to silence our own voice so that we can hear the voices of others as the Holy Spirit is speaking. It means things won't always look like the way that we're used to them looking if we are truly open to the Holy Spirit moving in new ways. So even as we give thanks for the comfort that most of us have probably experienced the Holy Spirit providing at some point in our life, as we give thanks for the comfort, we also recognize on Pentecost that we invite this disruptive presence of God into our own lives, into our church, into our community, and into our world. We've been in the narrative lectionary since the second week of September. The lectionary ends today with Pentecost Sunday. We'll move into Isaiah next month and then some other texts throughout the summer but the narrative lectionary follows the school year for the most part and for the narrative lectionary on pentecost sunday they not only give us this passage that most of us are used to hearing on pentecost sunday from acts but they also have a passage for us from romans 8. for the sake of time i'm going to let you read romans 8 on your own this week i'm off this week, so if you have questions on Romans 8, feel free to reach out to Pastor Scott and ask him whatever your questions are, okay? Romans 8, read it on your own. Throughout Romans, right, we've been talking for the last few weeks about Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Throughout Paul's letter to the church of Rome, the Greek word pneuma, spirit, appears 34 times. 20 of those 34 occurrences are in Romans chapter 8. This is where Paul is talking about the Spirit. So just a few verses to highlight and say a word about. Romans 8, 15. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption when we cry, Abba, Father. I love the use of the word adoption here. Because... Whether we have any story of our own or we know someone else's story, we recognize that the power of adoption is the power of creating community where there wasn't community before. The power of adoption is welcoming in the other so that we might become family together. 
The power of this is that we recognize that we are called into community together because we are all gods and we are all loved by God, not because of what we say, not because of what we pray, not because of what we do, not because we are any different than anyone else, but because God, through Christ Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, has adopted us into his loving family. And that is not just those of us here, but that is all of creation. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. How many of you have found yourself in a situation where groans were all you could muster? Where even if you had words to pray, they would not have been enough. In those times, we give thanks for this word of promise in Romans 8, 26, that the Spirit intercedes on our behalf with groans that we can't understand, but that God fully understands. We give thanks that the Spirit comes before God on our behalf, and when we are in a situation where there are not possibly words to pray, God still knows the prayers that are deep within our hearts. Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. This is a text that is often taken out of context. Romans 8, 28 is not, if you follow God and if you have enough faith, then you won't have hardships in this life. Not in here. Romans 8, 28 is not, God caused this hardship to bring about something good. Not in here. Romans 8.28 is that when you face challenges of this life because this world is still broken and we are still sinners, and when you face challenges that are unexplainable or explainable, when you think there is no hope for tomorrow because of what you are going through, what this says is that you are not alone in that hardship and that even though you can't see it and don't understand it, God didn't have to create it, but God will use what you are going through to bring about good. Here's a great example. Our mission of the month is LPGM, Lutheran Partners in Global Ministry. Gordon and Betty Olson, I can't imagine the pain they still feel when they first got, from when they first got that news in 1991 that their son Tim was killed in Central Africa Republic. Yet just four years later, they created Lutheran Partners in Global Ministry, and thousands of kids in places around this world have received education and food and housing and opportunity that would not have been available to them if Tim and Betty and the many people, including many in this community that came around them, didn't step forward to turn the tragedy of Tim's death into something good that would become a blessing for so, so many. God can still bring good even out of the hardship. Romans 8, 38 and 39, we often hear at funerals. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We don't just need to hear this at funerals. This is a promise we can cling to. This is a promise that says, whatever you may be facing, whatever you did, whatever happened to you, whatever you feel like is the greatest divide, it's nothing. It's nothing because nothing can take God's love away from any of us. Whether we've known that love and lived it out fully or whether we've never heard it, God's love for us is real and it is stronger than anything. It's this love that we often struggle to put words to as the Holy Spirit moves in ways that so often we don't even recognize when it happens, but maybe when we pause and look back later, we say, look at how God was in that. Look at where the Holy Spirit was leading in that. The Holy Spirit works through a loved one that's willing to get you fired so that you can go and do what you are called to do because they know you are not living up to your fullest potential. The Holy Spirit works through a loved one who will fly around the world to come and bring the message that you so desperately need to hear. 
The Holy Spirit moves through a friend who reminds you of how you have been forgiven so that you might be able to forgive. I cannot believe that the last episode of Ted Lasso is coming out this week. And as a pastor, I don't think I've endorsed anything other than by the Bible as much as I would endorse you going and binging Ted Lasso this summer on Apple TV. This show is so powerful, and they do such a great job of addressing life and community and brokenness and love and how hard it is for us to come into community and accept one another, but the power of what happens when we do. Pentecost Sunday. We know that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. We know that the Holy Spirit is alive and moving in and through this church and this community. So I'm going to freak you out a little and we're going to do something a little different. So I would ask you to go ahead and take out your phones, please. Yes, I know you have them. Go ahead and pull your phone out. Open up your phone and open your contacts, right? That's where you have a list of people and their numbers. I want you to just slowly start scrolling through your contacts. As you just say a little prayer in your heart, God, who are you putting on my heart and mind today? Scroll through your contacts as you say, God, who's standing out? Here's what we're going to invite you to do. We're going to invite you, whoever God puts on your heart, maybe it's one person, maybe there's a couple people. We're going to invite you to send a quick text message. Put this in your own words, right? But here's some examples. Just wanted to say I'm thinking of you. Hope you have a great day. Or I know it's been a while. Just wanted to say I'm thinking of you. Or I know you're going through a lot. Just wanted to know, you to know that you are not alone. Or just wanted to say I love you. Who needs to hear a message and be reminded that they're not alone? that you're in relationship with them. Maybe it's somebody you just saw yesterday. Maybe it's somebody you haven't been in conversation with for months. Guys, I'm looking at you. You're not too macho to do this. As men, we need to be able to say, I'm thinking of you or I love you or reach out in relationship. So I want you to start sending text messages. Here's the next part. This is where some people are going to be like, why are we doing this in church? I want you to turn your volume all the way up. No, I'm serious. I want you to turn your volume all the way up, and I want you to start sending text messages to people that you think the Holy Spirit's putting on your heart and mind today. And as we continue to move forward with singing songs and lifting up prayers, as we pray, we're going to be praying for the people who are getting those text messages. As we hear that ding go off as that text message comes back, we're going to give thanks that the Holy Spirit's moving us into deeper relationship. If somebody calls and you know they're going through something and they need to talk right now, we would just ask that you step out so you can talk with them briefly. When they reply and say, thanks, that was weird, why'd you text me? You can say, I'm in church, my pastor told me to text somebody that I thought might need a message of encouragement today and I thought of you. Or you could use your phone, this might be a technologically advanced, but you could use your phone and take a picture of this slide Thought is technologic. 10.30 I know will do it. 8.30 I was questioning if anybody would. But you can take a picture of this slide and when they reply, then you could send them the picture and say, I'm in church and I heard this message and I just wanted you to hear it too. I want you to know that you are loved. I want you to know that I'm with you. We don't have to have big fancy words. We don't have to have grandiose stories when we simply are willing to be the one to reach out and trust that the Holy Spirit is moving today, we might be a part of not just changing somebody's moment or changing somebody's day. A simple text message might change somebody's life because someone in their contacts had the courage to reach out and bless them today. I don't hear any texts coming back yet. How many of you have already sent a text? So if you have a phone, this is when we encourage you to start sending text messages. You've heard this once or twice. May you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love really is. Is the church today what we celebrate? 
what we celebrate is that the Holy Spirit is on the move. We still get a lot wrong. But if we're willing to reach out, if we're willing to trust the Holy Spirit to move today, there's a lot we can get right. May you know how loved you are. Amen. Gathered as siblings in Christ, let us affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Father Almighty, Almighty. creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God. Wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Ever present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O God. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially our members, Sharon, Andrea, Betty, Gert, 
Brad and Lois, Ron and Carol, Kent, Dave, Henry, Dave, Jerry, Don, Cheryl, Naomi, Gary and Karen, Bob and Marie, Stephanie, Art, and Wayne, and also families and friends of our saviors, Mary, Phyllis, Jamie, Jill, Lars, Emily, Jan, Ann, Ann, Maynard and Yvonne, Elijah, Frank, Mike, hear us, O oh God. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our centered and community. Hear us, O oh God. Life-giving God, we thank the, th we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment to share that peace now.
we pray. Everything we have, we owe to your generosity, O oh God. Receive these gifts we offer and use them to benefit your children in need, whoever and wherever they may be in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. For those of you worshiping at home, now is the time to bring in those elements into your worship space and receive these words as you commune each other. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ given for you. For us in this place, Christ invites us to the table. Come taste and see. Please be seated.
God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And receive the blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees them from despair, bless you with truth and peace. May the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. As you head straight out, stop at that Welcome Information Center. Check out the sign-ups that are out there before you take a right out of the worship center. Head into the social hall, enjoy some coffee, treats, fellowship time with one another before you go and enjoy this beautiful day and this Memorial Day weekend. Continue to pray for all those that we've texted, those that you sent messages to or will later, and those that others have as we give thanks for the Holy Spirit moving. Go in peace with Christ beside you.